Introduction to Microsoft Azure AZ 900. Microsoft Azure is a cloud computing platform with an ever expanding set of services to help you build solutions to meet your business goals. Azure services support everything from simple to complex. Azure has simple web services for hosting your business presence in the cloud. Azure also supports running fully virtualized computers managing your custom software solutions. Azure provides a wealth of cloud-based services like remote storage, database hosting, and centralized account management. Azure also offers new capabilities like AI, artificial intelligence, and Internet of Things, IoT focused services. In this course, you will cover cloud computing basics, be introduced to some of the core services provided by Microsoft Azure, and will learn more about the governance and compliance services that you can use. So why should I take Azure Fundamentals? If you are just beginning to work with the cloud, or if you already have cloud experience, this course provides you with everything you need to get started. No matter your goals, Azure Fundamentals has something for you. You should take this course if you are or you have a general interest in Azure in the cloud, you want to learn and earn official certification from Microsoft AZ 900. AZ 900 domain areas. So we have domain areas and the weight on the exam. So we have the described cloud concepts. This has a weight of 25 to 30%. We have described Azure architecture and services. This is 35 to 40%. We have the Describe Azure Management and Governance, and it, which is 30 to 35%. I will see you in the next lecture. Describe Cost Management in Azure. Introduction. Now, in this section, you will be introduced to factors that impact cost in Azure and tools to help you both predict potential cost and monitor and control cost. So, learning objectives after completing this section, you will be able to Describe factors that can affect a cost in Azure. Compare the price calculator and total cost of ownership TCO calculator. Describe Azure cost management tool. And describe the purpose of tags. Thanks for watching. Describe factors that can affect costs in Azure. Azure shifts de development cost from the capital expense CapEx of building out and maintaining infrastructure and facilitates to an operational expense OPEX, of renting infrastructure as you need it, whether it is compute, storage, networking, and so on. That OPEX cost can be impacted by many factors. Some of the impacting factors are resource type, consumption, maintenance, geography, subscription type, age or marketplace. Resource type. A number of factors influence the cost of Azure resources. The type of resources, the settings for resource, the Azure region will all have an impact on how much a resource costs. When you provision an Azure resource, Azure creates metered instances for that resource. The meters track the resources usage and generate usage record that is used to calculate your bill. Examples. So with a storage account, you specify a type such as blob, a performance tier, an access tier, redundancy settings, and region. So creating the same storage account in different region may show different costs and changing any of the settings may also impact the price. So here you can see that we have the, this blob storage image. So here you can see it. We have allow cross tenant replication as checked here and we have a hot frequently access data and day-to-day -day usage scenario, all right? So with the virtual machine VM, you may have to consider licensing for the operating system or other software. The processor and number of cores for the VM, the attached storage and the network interface. So just like with a storage, provisioning the same virtual machine in different region may result in different costs. So here you can see that we have the size here. So you can see that we can put the region, the availability option. We have the size here. 
okay and we have the option ager spot instance so here you can see that using different sizes consumption bay as you go has been a consistent theme throughout and that's the cloud payment model where you pay for the resources that you use during billing cycle if you use more compute this cycle you pay more if you use less in the current cycle you pay less it's a straightforward pricing mechanism that allows for maximum flexibility however Azure also offers the ability to commit to using the set amount of cloud resources in advance and receiving discounts on those reserved resources maintenance the flexibility of the cloud makes it possible to rapidly adjust resources based on demand using resource groups can help keep all of your resources organized in order to control cost it's important to maintain your cloud environment for example every time you provision a vm additional resources such as storage and network are also provisioned if you deprovision the vm those additional resources may not deprovision at the same time either intentionally or unintentionally by keeping an eye on your resources and making sure you're not keeping around resources that are no longer needed, you can help control cloud costs. Geography When you provision most resources in Azure, you need to define a region where the resource deploys. Azure infrastructure is distributed globally, which enables you to deploy your services centrally or closest to your customers or something in between. With this global deployment comes global pricing differences the cost of power labor taxes and fees vary depending on the location due to these variation Azure resources can differ in cost to deploy depending on the region network traffic is also impacted based on geography so for example it is less expensive to move information within europe than to move information from europe to asia or south america network traffic Billing zones are factor in determining the cost of some Azure services. Bandwidth refers to data moving in and out of Azure data centers. Some inbound data transfer data going into Azure data center are free. For outbound data transfer, data leaving Azure data center, data transferring pricing is based on zones. A zone is a geographical grouping of Azure regions for billing purposes. The bandwidth pricing page has additional information on pricing for data ingress, egress, and transfer. Subscription type. Some Azure subscription type also includes usage allowance, which affect costs. For example, an Azure free trial subscription provides access to a number of Azure products that are free for 12 months. It also includes credit to spend within your first 30 days of sign up. You will get access to more than 25 products that are always free based on resource and region availability. Azure Marketplace. Azure Marketplace lets you purchase Azure-based solution and service from third-party vendors. This could be a server with a software pre-installed and configured or managed network, firewall appliance, or connectors to third-party backup services. When you purchase products through Azure Marketplace, you may pay for not only the Azure services that you are using, but also the services or expertise of the third-party vendor. Billing structures are set by vendor. All solutions available in Azure Marketplace are certified and compliant with Azure policies and standards. The certifications policy may vary based on the services or solution type and Azure service involved. Commercial Marketplace certification policies has additional information on Azure Marketplace certifications. Okay, thanks for watching. Compare the pricing and total cost of ownership calculator. The pricing calculator and the total cost of ownership TCO calculator are two calculators that help you understand potential Azure expenses. Both calculators are accessible from the internet, and both calculators allow you to build out a configuration. However, the two calculators have very different purposes. Pricing calculator. The pricing calculator is designed to give you an estimated cost for provisioning resources in Azure. You can get an estimate for individual resources, build out a solution, or use an example scenario to see an estimate of the Azure spend. The pricing calculator's focus is on the cost provisioned resources in Azure. With the pricing calculator, you can estimate the cost of any provisioned resources, including compute, storage, and associated network costs. You can even account for a different storage options like storage type, access tier, and redundancy. So here you can see that this is just an image for the calculator we have. So you can choose your 
product like Azure Visor Automation, you have uh, Traffic Manager, Azure Site Recovery, Azure Cost Management and Billing. We have the networking, the storage, the web here are the product, compute for the VMs, and we have the popular as well. TCO Calculator. The TCO Calculator is designed to help you compare the cost for running on an on-premise infrastructure compared to an Azure Cloud infrastructure. With the TCO calculator, you enter your current infrastructure configuration, including servers, databases, storage, and outbound network traffic. The TCO calculator then compares the anticipated cost for your current environment with an HR environment supporting the same infrastructure requirement. With the TCO calculator, you enter your configuration, add in assumption like power and ITE labor costs, and are represented with an estimation of the cost difference to run the same environment in your current data center in or in Azure. So here you can see this is a screenshot for the TCO. So here you can define your workloads, you can put the servers, the workload one, workload two, and so on. Okay, and then it will give you uh, and you will adjust the assum assumptions and you will see the report of it. Thanks for watching. Describe the Azure cost management tool. Microsoft Azure is a global cloud provider, meaning you can provision resources anywhere in the world. You can provision resources rapidly to meet a sudden demand or to test out a new feature on an account or on accident. If you accidentally provision new resources, you may not be aware of them until it is time for your invoice. Cost management is an Azure service that helps you avoid these or those situations. So what is cost management? Cost management provides the ability to quickly check Azure resources, cost, create a list based on resource spend, and create budgets that can be used to automate management of resources. So cost analysis is a subset of cost management that provides a quick visual for your Azure Ag cost. Using cost analysis, you can quickly view the total costs in a variety of different ways, including the by billing cycle, re region, resource and so on so here i have a picture on this cost management so you can see that we can go to the cost management and here we can see the spending like per month annually monthly for each service for each region for specific times all of that will be here okay so you use cost analysis to explore and analyze your organizational costs you can view aggregated costs by an organization to understand where costs are occurred and to identify spending trends. You can see accumulated costs over the time to estimate monthly, quarterly, or even yearly cost trends against a budget and so on. So we have cost alerts. So cost alerts provide a single location to quickly check on all of the different alert types that may show up in the cost management service. There are three types of alerts that may show up are budget alerts, credit alerts, department spending quota alerts. So for the budget alerts, it notifies you when spending based on your usage or cost reaches or exceeds the amount defined in the alert conditioning of the budget. Cost management budget are created using the Azure portal or the Azure consumption API. In the Azure portal budgets, are defined by cost. Budgets are defined by cost or by consumption usage when using the Azure Consumption API. And budget alerts support both cost-based and usage-based budgets. Budget alerts are generated automatically whenever the budget alert condition are met. You can view all cost alert in the Azure portal. Whenever an alert is generated, it appears in cost alert. An alert email is also sent to the people in the alert recipients list of the budget. Credit alerts. It notifies you when your Azure credit monetary commitment are consumed. Monetary commitment are for organization with enterprise agreement EAs. So credit alerts are generated automatically at 90% and at 100% of your Azure credit balance. Whenever an alert is generated, it is reflected in cost alert and in the email sent to the account owners. Department spending quota alerts. So it notifies you when department spending reaches a fixed threshold of the quota. 
spending quota are configured in the EA portal. Whenever a threshold is met, it generates an email to department owners and appears in the cost alerts. For example, 50% or 75% of the quota. Budgets. Now, a budget is where you set a spending time or a spending limit for agent. You can set a budget based on a subscription, resource group, service type, or other criteria. When you set a budget, you will also set a budget alert. When the budget hits the budget alert level, it will trigger a budget alert that shows up in the cost alert area. If configured budget alert will also send an email notification that a budget alert threshold has been triggered. A more advanced use of budgets enables budget condition to trigger automation that suspends or otherwise modifies resource once the trigger condition has occurred. Thanks for watching. Describe the purpose of tax. As your cloud usage grows, it's increasingly important to stay organized. A good organization strategy helps you understand your cloud usage and can help you manage costs. One way to organize related resources is to place them in their own subscriptions. You can also use resource groups to manage related resources. And resource tags are another way to organize resources. Okay. So tags provide extra information or metadata about your resources. This metadata is useful for resource management tags enable you to locate and act on resources that are associated with specific workloads environments, business units, and owners. Cost management and optimization tags enable you to grow resources so that you can report on costs, allocate internal cost centers, track budgets, and forecast estimated cost. Operations management tags enable you to group resources according to how critical their availability is to your business. This grouping helps you formulate service level agreement SLAs and SLA is an uptime or performance guarantee between you and your users. Security tags enable you to classify data by its security level such as public or confidential. We have the government and regularity compliance tags enable you to identify resources that align with governance or regulatory compliance requirements such as ISO 27001 tags can also be part of your standard informed efforts for example you might require that all resources be tagged with an owner or department name we have workload optimization and automation tags it can help you visualize all of the resources that participate in complex deployments for example you might tag a resource with its associated workload or application name and use software such as Azure DevOps to perform automated tasks on those resources. How do I manage resource tags? You can add, modify, or delete resource tags through Windows PowerShell, the Azure CLI, the Azure Resource Manager templates, the REST API, or the Azure portal. You can use Azure policy to enforce tagging rules and conventions. For example, you can require that certain tags be added to new resources as they are provisioned. You can also define rules that reapply tags that have been removed. Also, tags aren't inherited, meaning that you can apply tags one level and not have those tags automatically show up at different level, allowing you to create custom tagging schemas that change depending on the level. So for example, resource, resource group, subscription, and so on. An example tagging structure. Resource tag consists of name and value, so you can assign one or more tags to each Azure resource. So here an example, app name and the value the name of the application the resource is part of, it's cost center, for example the internal cost center, owner, the name of the business owner who is responsible for the resource, environment an example, an environment name such as broad dev test, impact, how important the resource is to business operations such as mission critical, high impact, low impact, and so on. Keep in mind that you don't need to enforce that a specific tag is presented on all of the, your resources. For example, you might decide that only mission critical resources have impact tag. All non-tagged resources would then not be considered as a mission critical. Okay, thanks for watching. Describe features and tools in Azure for governance and compliance.
So in this section, you will be introduced to some of the features and tools you can use to help with governance of your Azure environment. You will also learn about tools you can use to help keep resources in compliance with cooperate or regulatory requirements. So the learning objectives after completing this module, you will be able to describe the purpose of Azure's blueprints, describe the purpose of Azure policy, describe the purpose of resource locks, describe the purpose of the service trust portal. Okay, thanks for watching. Describe the purpose of Azure blueprints. What happens when your cloud starts to grow beyond just one subscription or environment? How can you scale the configuration of features? How can you enforce settings and policy in your subscriptions? Azure Blueprint lets you standardize cloud subscription or environment deployments. So instead of having to configure features like Azure policy for each new subscription, with Azure Blueprint, you can define repeatable settings and policies that are applied as new subscription are created. Need a new test dev environment? Azure Blueprint lets you deploy a new dev test environment with security and compliance settings already configured. In this way, development teams can rapidly build and deploy new environments with the knowledge that they are building within organizational requirements. What are artifacts? Each component in the Blueprint definition is known as an artifact. It is possible to artifact to have no additional parameter configuration. An example is the deploy threat detection on SQL Server's policy, which requires no additional configuration. Artifacts can also contain one or more parameter that you can configure. The following screenshot shows the allowed locations policy. This policy includes a parameter that specifies the allowed locations. So here you can see that the allowed location, this is policy to enable you to restrict the location of your organization and can specify when deploying resources. So you can use enforce your geo compliance requirements, exclude resource group. So for example, Microsoft Azure Active Directory, B2C directories, and resources that use the global region. And by the way, you can see that we have uh, parameters. We have, you can see this value should be specified when Blueprint is assigned. And this is one of the options. You can specify a parameters value when you create the Blueprint definition or when you assign the Blueprint definition to scope. In this way, you can maintain one standard blueprint, but have the flexibility to specify the relevant configuration parameters at each scope where the definition is assigned. Azure Blueprints deploy a new environment based on all of the requirements, settings, and configuration of the associated artifacts. Artifacts can include things such as role assignments, policy assignments, Azure Resource Manager templates, resource groups, and so on. How do Azure Blueprints help monitor deployment? Azure Blueprints are version able, allowing you to create an initial configuration and then make updates later on and assign a new version to the update. With versioning, you can make a small updates and keep track of which deployments used which configuration set. With Azure Blueprints, the relationship between the Blueprint definition, what should be deployed, and the Blueprint assignment, what was deployed, is preserved. In other words, Azure creates a record that associates a resource with the Blueprint that defines it. This connection helps you track and audit your deployments. Thanks for watching. Describe the purpose of Azure policy. How do you ensure that your resource stay compliant? Can you be alerted if a resource configuration has changed? Azure policy is a service in Azure that enables you to create, assign, and manage policies that control or audit your resources. These policies enforce different roles across your resource configuration so that those configurations stay compliant with cooperate standards. So how does Azure policy define policies? Azure policy enables you to define both individual policies and group of related policies, known as initiatives. Azure policy evaluates your resources and highlights resources that aren't compliant with the policies you have created. Azure policy can also prevent non-compliant resources from being created. 
Azure policies can be set at each level, enabling you to set policies on a specific resource, resource group, subscription, and so on. Additionally, Azure policies are inherited. So if you set, so if you set a policy at a high level, it will automatically be applied to all of the grouping that fall within the parent. So for example, if you set an Azure policy on resource group, all resources created within that resource group will automatically receive the same policy. Azure policy comes with a built-in policy and initiative definition for storage, networking, compute, security center, and monitoring. For example, if you define a policy that allows only a certain size for the virtual machines, VMs, to be used in your environment, that policy is invoked when you create a new VM and whenever you resize existing VMs. Azure policy also evaluates and monitor all current VMs in your environment, including VMs that were created before the policy was created. In some cases, Azure policy can automatically remediate non-compliant resources and configurations to ensure the integrity of the state of the resources. For example, if all resources in a certain resource group should be tagged with the app name tag and value of special orders, then Azure policy will automatically apply all that tag in if it is missing. However, you still retain full control of your environment. If you have a specific resource that you don't want Azure policy to automatically fix, you can flag that resource as an exception, and the policy will not automatically fix that resource. Azure policy also integrates with Azure DevOps by applying any continuous integration and delivery pipeline policies that pertain to the pre-deployment and the post-deployment phases of your applications. So what are Azure policy initiatives? An Azure policy initiative is a way of grouping related policies together. The initiative definition contains all of the policy definitions to help track your compliance state for larger goal. For example, Azure policy includes an initiative named Enable Monitoring in Azure Security Center. Its goal is to monitor all available security recommendations for all Azure resource types in Azure Security Center. So under this initiative, the following policy definition are included. Monitor an encrypted SQL database in Security Center. This policy monitors for unencrypted SQL databases and servers. Monitor OS vulnerabilities in Security Center. This policy monitors servers that do not satisfy the configured OS vulnerability baseline. Monitor missing endpoint protection in Security Center. This policy monitors for servers that do not have an installed endpoint protection agent. So in fact, the Enable Monitor in Azure Security Center initiative contains over 100 separate policy definitions. Thanks for watching. Describe the purpose of resource locks. A resource lock prevents resources from being accidentally deleted or changed. Even with Azure role-based access control are back policies in place, there's a still risk that people with a right level of access could delete the critical cloud resources. So resource locks prevent resources from being deleted or updated, depending on the type of the lock. Resource locks can be applied to individual resources, resource groups, or even an entire subscription. So resource locks are inherited, meaning that if you place a resource lock on a resource group, all of the resources within the resource group will also have the resource lock applied. Types of resource locks. There are two types of resource locks, one that prevent users from deleting and one that prevent users from changing or deleting a resource. So delete means authorized user can still read and modify a resource, but they cannot delete the resource. And read only resource means authorized user can read a, a resource, but they cannot delete or update the resource. Applying this locks is similar to restricting all authorized users to the permission granted by the re reader role. So we have two types of resource, delete and read only. Delete, you cannot delete. Read only, you can just read only. So you cannot delete and you cannot update. How do I manage resource locks? You can manage resource locks from Azure Portal, PowerShell, Azure CLI, or Azure Resource Manager template. To view, add, or delete locks in the Azure Portal, go to the Settings section of any resource settings pane in the Azure Portal. 
so from here you can see that we can we have a locks or uh, like a lock here okay and if you click on it you can see that you can have uh, your resource there how do i delete or change a locked resource although looking help prevent accidental changes you can still make changes by following two step process to modify a locked resource you must first remove the lock after you remove the lock you can apply any action you have permission to perform resource locks apply regardless of our back permissions even if you are an owner of the resource you must still remove the lock before you can perform the blocked activity thanks for watching describe the purpose of the service trust portal the Microsoft Service Trust Portal is a portal that provides access to various content, tools, and other resources about Microsoft security, privacy, and compliance practices. So the Service Trust Portal contains details about Microsoft's implementation of controls and processes that protect our cloud services and the customer data therein. To access some of the resources on the Service Trust Portal, you must sign in as an authenticated user with Microsoft Cloud Service account Age or Active Directory Organization account, for example, you will need to review and accept the Microsoft Non-Disclosure Agreement for compliance materials. So, to accessing the Service uh, Trust portal, you can access the, it at the servicetrust.microsoft.com. Okay, so you can see that you will see something. So, this is an image of it, and to build upon a foundation of trust, security, and compliance, as you can see. Describe the purpose of Service Trust Portal. So the Service Trust Portal features and content are accessible from the main menu. The categories on the main menu are like Service Trust Portal provides a quick access hyperlink to return to the Service Trust Portal homepage. Trust Documents provides a wealth of security implementation and design information. The goal of the information is to make it easier for you to meet regulatory uh, compliance objectives by understanding how Microsoft Cloud Service keep your data secure. Trust Documents has sub-items including audit, reports, data protection, and HR stack. Industries and Regions provides industry and region-specific compliance information about Microsoft Cloud Services. Trust Center links to the Microsoft Trust Center. The Trust Center provides more information about security, compliance, and privacy in Microsoft Cloud. This includes information about capabilities in Microsoft Cloud Service that you can use to address specific requirements of the General Data Protection Regulation, documentation helpful to your GDPR accountability, and documentation helpful to understanding the technical and organizational measures Microsoft has taken to support the GDPR. Resources provide access to more resources such as security, and compliance center, information on Microsoft Global Data Center, and frequently asked questions. My library lets you save or bin documents to quickly access them on your My Library page. You can also set up to receive a notification when documents in your My Library are updated. Thanks for watching. Describe features and tools for managing and deploying Azure resources. So in this module, you will be introduced to features, tools uh, for managing and deploying Azure resources. You will learn about the Azure portal, a graphical interface for managing Azure resources, command line, and scripting tools that help deploy or configure resources. You will also learn about Azure services that help you manage your on-premises and multi-cloud environment from Azure. So after completing this module, you will be able to describe Azure Portal, describe Azure Cloud Shell, including Azure CLI and Azure PowerShell, describe the purpose of Azure Arc, describe Azure Resource Manager ARM and Azure ARM templates. Thanks for watching. Describe tools for interacting with Azure. To get the most out of Azure, you need a way to interact with Azure environment and the management groups, subscription, resource groups, resources, and so on. Azure provides multiple tools for managing your environment, including Azure Portal, Azure PowerShell, Azure Command Line Interface CLI. Now, what is the Azure Portal? The Azure Portal is a web-based unified console that provides an alternative to command line tools. With the Azure Portal, you can manage your Azure subscription by using a graphical user interface, so you can build, manage, and monitor everything from a simple web apps to complex cloud deployments. Create custom dashboards for organized view of resources. Configure accessibility options for an optimal 
experience. The Azure portal is designed for resiliency and continuous availability. It maintains a presence in every Azure data center. This configuration makes the Azure portal resilient to individual data center failures and avoids network slowdown by being close to users. The Azure portal updates continuously and requires no downtime for maintenance activity. Azure Cloud Shell Azure Cloud Shell is a browser-based shell tool that allows you to create, configure, and manage Azure resources using the shell. Azure Cloud Shell supports both Azure PowerShell and Azure CLI, which is the Bash shell. You can access Azure Cloud Shell via the Azure portal by selecting the Cloud Shell icon. So here you can see that it will be appeared here. Here it is. Okay. Azure Cloud Shield has several features that make it a unique offering to support in managing Azure. Some of those features are It is a browser-based shell experience with no lo local installation of or configuration required. It is authenticated to your Azure credential, so when you log in, it inherently knows who you are and what permissions you have. You can choose the shell you are most familiar with. Azure Cloud Shell supports both Azure PowerShell and Azure CLI, which is, uses ba Bash. So what is PowerShell? Azure PowerShell is a shell with which developers, DevOps, and IT professionals can run commands called commandlets or CMDlets. These commands call the Azure REST API to perform management tasks in Azure commandlets can be run independently to handle one-off changes, or they may be combined to help orchestrate complex actions such as their routine setup, teardown, and maintenance of a single resource of or multiple connected resources. The deployment of an entire infrastructure which might contain dozens or hundreds of resources from imperative code. Capturing the commands in a script makes the process repeatable and automatable. In addition to be available via Azure Cloud Shell, you can install and configure Azure PowerShell in Windows, Linux, and Mac platforms. So what is Azure CLI? It is functionality equivalent to Azure PowerShell with the primary difference being syntax of commands. While Azure PowerShell uses PowerShell commands, the Azure CLI uses bash commands. Azure CLI provides the same benefits of handling discrete tasks or orchestrating complex operations through code. It is also installable on Windows, Linux, and Mac platforms as well as through Azure Cloud Shell. Due to the similarities in capabilities and access between Azure PowerShell and Bash-based Azure CLI, it mainly comes down to which language you're most familiar with. Thanks for watching. Describe the purpose of Azure Arc. Managing hybrid and multi-cloud environments can rapidly get complicated. Azure provides a host of tools to provision, configure, and monitor Azure resources. So what about the on-premises resources in hybrid configuration or the cloud resources in a multi-cloud configuration? In utilizing Azure Resource Manager, ARM, ARC lets you extend your Azure compliance and monitor to your hybrid and multi-cloud configuration. So Azure ARC simplifies governance and management by delivering a consistent multi-cloud and on-premise management platform. So Azure Arc provides a centralized, unified way to manage your entire environment together by protecting your existing non-Azure resource into ARM, manage multi-cloud and hybrid virtual machine, Kubernetes clusters and databases if they are running in Azure, use familiar Azure services and management capabilities regardless of where they live, continue using tra traditional IT ops while introducing DevOps practices to support a new cloud and native pattern in your environment, configure custom locations as an abstraction layer on top of Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters and cluster extensions. What can Azure Arc do outside of Azure? Currently, Azure Arc allows you to manage the following resource types hosted outside of Azure. Servers, Kubernetes clusters, Azure Data Services, SQL Server, virtual machines, and in preview, and so on. Thanks for watching. Describe Azure Resource Manager and Azure ARM templates. Azure ARM is the deployment and management service for Azure. It provides management layer that enables you to create, update, and delete resources in Azure account. Anytime you do anything with Azure resources, ARM is involved. 
When a user sends a request from any of the Azure tools, APIs or SDKs, ARM receives the request. ARM authenticates and authorizes the request. Then ARM sends the request to the Azure service, which takes the requested action. You see consistent result and capabilities in all the different tools because all requests are handled through the same API. Azure Resource Manager Benefits with Azure Resource Manager, you can manage your infrastructure through declarative templates rather than scripts. A Resource Manager template is a JSON file that defines what you want to deploy to Azure. Deploy, manage, and monitor all resources for your solution as a group rather than handling these resources individually. Redeploy your solution throughout the development life cycle and have confidence your resources are deployed in consistent state. Define the dependencies between resources so they deployed in correct order. Also, apply access control to all services because RBAC is natively integrated into the management platform. Apply tags to resources to logically organize all resources in your subscription. Clarify your organization billing by viewing costs for a group of resources that share the same tag. ARM templates. The infrastructure as code is concept where you manage your infrastructure as lines of code. Leveraging Azure Cloud Shell, Azure PowerShell, or the Azure CLI are some examples of using code to deploy infrastructure. ARM templates are another example of infrastructure as code at work. By using ARM templates, you can describe the resources you want to use in a declarative JSON format. With an ARM template, the deployment code is verified before any code is run. So this ensures that the resource will be created and connected correctly. The template then orchestrates the creation of those resources in parallel. That is, if you need 50 instance of the same resource, all 50 instances are created at the same time. Ultimately, the developer, DevOps professional or IT professional needs only to define the desired state and configuration of each resource in the ARM template and the template does the rest. So templates can even execute PowerShell and bash scripts before or after the resource has been set up. Benefits of using ARM ARM template to provide many benefits when planning for deploying Azure resources. Some of those benefits are Declarative syntax. So ARM templates allow you to create and deploy entire Azure infrastructure declaratively. Declarative syntax means you can de declare what you want to deploy, but do not need to write the actual programming commands and sequence to deploy the resources. Repeatable results, repeatedly deploy your infrastructure throughout the de development lifecycle and have confidence your resources are deployed in consistent manner. You can use the same ARM template to deploy multiple dev test environment, knowing that all environments are the same. Also, orchestration. You don't have to worry about the complexity of ordering operation. Azure Resource Manager orchestrates the deployment of interdependent resources, so they are created in the correct order. When possible, Azure ARM deploys resource in parallel, so your deployment finish faster than serial deployment. You deploy the de template through one command rather than through multiple imperative commands. Also, we have modular files. You can break your template into smaller, reusable components, link them, together at deployment time you can also nest one template inside another template for example you could create a template for vm stack and then nest that template inside of templates that deploy entire environments and that vm stack will consistently be deployed in each of the environment templates extensibility so with deployment scripts you can add powershell or bash script to your template the deployment script extends your ability to set up resources during deployment. A script can be included in the template or stored in an external source and referenced in the template. Deployment script gives you the ability to complete your end-to-end -end environment setup in a single ARM template. Thanks for watching. Describe monitoring tools in Azure. So in this section, you will be introduced to tools that help you monitor your environment and applications, both in Azure and on-premises or multi-cloud environment. So, after completing this module, you will be able to Describe the purpose of Azure Advisor Describe Azure Service Health Describe Azure Monitor, including Azure Log Analytics Azure Monitor Alerts and Application Insight Thanks for watching Describe the purpose of Azure Advisor 
Agile Advisor evaluates your agile resources and makes recommendation to help improve reliability, security, and performance, achievement, operational excellence, and reduce cost. Agile Advisor is designed to help you save time on cloud optimization. The recommendation service includes suggested actions you can take right away, postpone, or dismiss. So the recommendations are available via Azure portal and the API, and you can set up a notification to alert you to new recommendation. When you are in the Azure portal, the advisor dashboard displays personalized recommendation for all your subscriptions. You can use filters to select recommendation for specific subscription, resource group, or services. And the recommendations are divided into five categories. Reliability is used to ensure and improve the continuity of your business critical application. Security is used to detect threats and vulnerabilities that might lead to security breach. Performance is used to improve the speed of your applications. Operational excellence is used to help you achieve process and workflow efficiency, resource manageability, and deployment best practices. Cost is used to optimize and reduce your overall Azure spending. So here you can see that this is the Azure Advisor. Here a screenshot of it. Reliability, security, performance, operational excellence, and cost. Thanks for watching. Describe Azure Service Health. Microsoft Azure provides a global cloud solution to help you manage your infrastructure needs, reach your customers, innovate, and adapt rapidly. Knowing the status of global Azure infrastructure and your individual resources could seem like a daunting task. Azure Service Health helps you keep track of Azure resource, both your specifically deployed resource and overall status of Azure. Azure Service Health does this by combining three different Azure services. So the Azure status, which is a broad picture of status of Azure globally. Azure status inform you of service outage in Azure on Azure status page. The page is a global view of the health of all Azure services across all Azure regions. It is a good reference for an incident with widespread impact. We have a service health provides a narrow view of Azure service and regions. It focuses on the Azure services and regions you're using. This is the best place to look for service impacting communications about outage, planned maintenance activities, and other health advisories because the authenticated service health experience knows which service and resources you currently use. You can even set up service health alerts to notify you when service issues, planned maintenance, or other changes may affect the age of services and regions you use. And we have the resource health is a tailored view of, of your actual Azure resources. It provides information about the health of your individual cloud resources, such as specific virtual machine. Using Azure Monitor, you can also configure alerts to notify you of availability changes to your cloud resources. By using Azure Status Service Health and Resource Health, Azure Service Health gives you a complete view of your Azure environment all the way from global status of Azure services and regions down to specific resources. Additionally, historical alerts are stored and accessible for later review. Something you initially thought was simple anomaly that turned into a, a trend can readily be reviewed and investigated thanks to the historical alerts. Finally, in the event that workload you're running is impacted by an event, Azure Service Health provides links to support. Thanks for watching. Describe Azure Monitor. Azure Monitor is a platform for collecting data on your resources, analyzing that data, visualizing the information, and even acting on the results. Azure Monitor can monitor Azure resources, your on-premises resources, and even multi-cloud resources like virtual machine hosted with a different cloud provider. The following diagram illustrates just how comprehensive Azure Monitor is. So here you can see that we have the workloads, we have the infrastructure, Azure platform, custom sources here, and it will start collecting here, as you can see, into the Azure Monitor here. And the Azure Monitor here, we have data platform, metrics, logs, traces, and it will be to the experiences, visualize, analyze, respond, integrate, and so on. On the left here is the list of the sources, as we saw from the image of logging and metric data that can be collected at every layer in your application architecture, from application to operating system and network. In the center, we saw that the logging and metric data are stored in central repositories. On the right, 
we saw that the data is used in several ways. So you can view real time and historical performance across each layer of your architecture or aggregated and detailed information. The data is displayed at different levels for different audience. You can view high level reports on the Azure monitor, this dashboard, or create custom views by using Power BI and Custo queries. Additionally, you can use the data to help you reach to critical events in real time through alerts delivered to teams via SMS, email, and so on. Or you can use thresholds to trigger auto scaling functionality to scale to meet the demand. Azure Log Analytics. Azure Log Analytics is a tool in the Azure portal where you will write and run log queries on the data gathered by Azure Monitor. Log Analytics is a robust tool that supports both simple, complex query and data analysis. You can write a simple query that returns a set of records and then use features of Log Analytics to sort, filter, and analyze the records. You can write an advanced query to perform statistical analysis and visualize the result in a chart to identify a particular trend. So whether you work with the result of your queries interactively or use them with other Azure Monitor features such as Log Query Alerts or Workbox, Log Analytics is the tool that you are going to use to write the test those queries. The Azure Monitor Alerts. Azure Monitor Alerts are an automated way to stay informed when Azure Monitor detect a threshold being crossed. You set the alert condition, the notification actions, and then Azure Monitor Alerts notify when an alert is triggered. Depending on your configuration, Azure Monitor Alerts can also attempt corrective action. So here, let's see this image. You can see that we have this subscription, this resource group, and the time range the past one hour. Total of 29 alert, one smart group, and one total alert rules. Here you can see that this is depends on the severity as well. So alert can be set up to monitor the logs and trigger on certain log events, or they can be set to monitor metrics and trigger when certain metrics are crossed. For example, you could set a metric-based alert up to notify you when the CPU usage on a virtual machine exceeds 80%, Alert you rules based on metric provide near real time alerts based on numeric values. Rules based on logs allow for complex logic across data from multiple sources and so on. Azure monitor alerts use action groups to configure who to notify and what action to take. An action group is simply collection of notification and action preferences that you associate with one or multiple alerts. Azure monitor service health and Azure Advisor all uses action groups to notify you when an alert has been triggered. Application Insights Application Insight and Azure Monitor feature monitor your web applications. Application Insight is capable of monitoring applications that are running in Azure on-premises or in different cloud environment. There are two ways to configure Application Insight to help monitor your application. You can either install an SDK on your application or you can use the Application Insight Agent. The Application Insight Agent is supported in c .NET, VB.NET, Java, JavaScript, Node.js, and Python. Once Application Insight is up and running, you can use it to monitor a broad array of information such as request rates, responses times, and failure rates, dependencies rate, responses times and failure rates to show whether external services are slowing down performance, page views and load performance reported by users' browsers, AJAX calls from web page including rates, response times and failure rates, user and session counts, performance counters from Windows or Linux server machines such as CPU, memory and network usage. Not only does Application Insight help you monitor the performance of your application, but you can also configure it to periodically send synthetic requests to your application, allowing you to check the status and monitor your application even during periods of low activity. Thanks for watching.